All right, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Okay, we need to wake up, guys. We're going to go ahead and do our rack to kind of get our minds thinking today and get our bodies moving. Are we ready? Yes. Okay, let's do it. out of the song and I put in all math content that I write and it helps the kids memorize the content, it helps them understand it and they get excited about math because at 8 o'clock in the morning I'm a little droggy coming in just kind of a little ready for math and here they come in, they're going to rap, they're going to get their blood flowing, they're ready to go, they're in the right frame of mind and we just get started that way, we just get the blood flowing and the mind going. So when we were growing up we grew up with Schoolhouse Rock and I still remember the songs, conjunction, function, all that fun goodness that came with uh, Squash Rock. And what was that? Was behind that was a song that helped you remember content and different things. And that's exactly what I try and do with the kids today. I try and give them a layout of the words that I've written, and then we break it down. So if it says, you know, 
uh, there has to be a common denominator if I say that in a song, then we actually solve a problem showing the common denominator breaking down next to it. So they associate the lyrics of the song with the concept. And when they're looking at it and they're memorizing the song, they're not just looking at memorizing words. They're looking at the concepts. And if it says rotate clockwise, they're going to see an object going clockwise and the angles that it goes with. And they're actually memorizing the content, not just the words. So that's something I try and use, just like we had Squats Rock. At the first year I did, I said, well, I'm going to make a complete fool of myself uh, creating a rap. Who am I to get in front of a, you know, a classical fifth grade? You've got to forget about that. you just got to do it. It's going to help your students. And, I did it, and I thought, well, I hope it helps. Well, sure enough, here came the benchmark, and here I hear, I was thinking about Matt, thinking about me. And here they go writing down the concepts on, on their scratch paper, and I'm thinking, well, you did the scratch paper for your work. Why are you writing the words down to the song? But they just sat there, uh, okay, prime means two, composite many. Okay, prime has two factors, composite has many factors, and they're sitting there writing down the lyrics going through it. And it's so cool to see the kids just get it in their own way, because we're all different learners. I learn a different way than you learn. And, and why not reach out to kids in this different way, you know? We are going to get into graphs, okay? Are we ready for graphs today? Yes? yes? Okay. Who can tell me what we're going to find, what we're learning today? Where are we going to find it? Can somebody point to it for me? Where? Okay, graphs are over here. Good. That's a chart that we've made before about which graph should I use. Where else are we going to find? Oh, Elijah, I see you pointing over there. What's over there? The essential questions. Standards. The essential questions and the? Standards. Good. These are the things that we're going to be learning today, okay? And we'll also go on to the lesson today. I use the interactive board um, that I have along with the cart. We have a technology cart here with a, uh, a short throw projector and a kind of a touch screen that you can use. And uh, I just did a PowerPoint just reviewing uh, the different graphs we've uh, covered a little bit. It was just a, a little technology piece where they can see you know, same with kids in music. They need technology. This, they're, they're sitting at home playing on these video games. If you sit there with a textbook and you say, well, now we're on page 123, and this is how you do it, they're going to be so bored. you got to do something that's fun, and they're looking, and there's colors, and there's things moving. Um, just to tie all the lesson together, go over the essential question, go over the standards, uh, and, and just review what the graphs look like. And double bar graphs, okay? The next one we're going to be looking at is MA5S72, you see it comes right after S71, right? And that talks about, ooh, continuous and, ooh, okay, continuous and discrete data, and how we can use graphs to work with that. And the last thing we're gonna be working with is MA5A42, where we can make graphs and we can talk about them. Something that changes over time. Okay, so think about that. That's what we're gonna be talking about. Now, what should you know when you leave here? What do we also call this? The exit ticket, but it's also our what? Essential question. Good. So our essential questions for today are, how do you choose the best type of graph for displaying data? When you see numbers, how do I know which graph to use? Well, we'll talk about that today. Also, what is the difference between continuous and discrete data? Okay, I see Antonio go, ooh. We will learn that today. Oh, I see you flip it in your math journal. Good. We'll build upon what we've learned before. Okay. Um, so they know that every day, oh, that is such a question. I need to answer it. You know, when I asked them, what are you learning today? Well, they pointed to the chart first. And I said, well, what else are you learning? Immediately they point to the standards. They know that, oh, we're learning this today. And that's something really cool that they can come in. And I know I like to know what I'm going to do. I like a schedule. And so every day they come in and say, oh, okay, we're going to work with graphs today. Okay, cool. Okay, let's talk about bar graphs. Somebody tell me what they know about bar graphs. What do you know, Dario? They only deal with whole numbers. Oh, they only deal with whole numbers? What do we call something that only deals with whole numbers? Oh, I see math journals flipping at table one. Okay, Marcus? Discrete data. Oh, okay, so you think discrete data has to deal with whole numbers. Okay, okay, okay. Good. Angel? And continuous data is dealt with uh, half numbers like decimals and fractions. Oh, okay. So will we have decimals and fractions in a bar graph most likely? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think at a line graph. Oh, you think maybe a line graph for continuous? We'll have it at a line graph, I think. Because oh. the line graph deals with... A line graph could deal with 
Whole numbers and half numbers. Oh, you're getting ahead of me. That is really good, Angel. That's really, really good. So a line graph has to do with whole and decimals. Great. And I'm going to bring you right in in just a second, okay? Let's look at bar graphs. Dariel pointed out, along with Marcus, that whole numbers are used. What else do we use a bar graph for, guys? Think. What would you use a bar graph for? Give me an example. Keon? Comparing things. Comparing things. Okay. So a bar graph, good, is used to compare data. Okay. Also, Dariel and Marcus, y'all hit it on the head. A bar graph has discrete data because only whole numbers are possible. You guys are awesome. Today. Look at this. This right here, can somebody raise your hand and tell me the title of this graph or what it's about? Orm? Car colors. Car colors. And just by looking at this, this is what I like about bar graphs, you can just look at it and you can know. Looking at this, which car color was the most popular? Deja? Silver. Silver, how did you know? Because it's the highest out of all of them. Oh, it's the highest bar out of all of them. Good job, Deja. Next one, a double bar graph. When would we use a double bar graph? Andre? To compare two things. Oh, to compare two things. Okay, so maybe, can you think of an example? Okay, who likes dogs and cats? And maybe you break it down by like, how many girls and boys go to Leitches? So how many girls like cats and how many dogs like, or how many girls like cats and how many boys like cats? That could be awesome, guys. So you use it to compare two different similar sets of data. So let's see here. So this one, can somebody tell me the name of this double bar graph? Because remember, where did we find the title? Tiffany, come point to the title for me. Where's the title on our graph? Oh, and what does it say? Last name of people at the reunion. Oh, a last name of people at the family reunion. Okay, so you see here, what do we call this right here? Thing right there. Mm, Daviana? A key. A key. And what does the key do for us? Um, so you haven't come on. Alasia, what's a key do? It helps us figure out what what the bar is talking about. Oh, what are they talking about, right? If they didn't give us a key, we'd say, well, it looks like watermelon, doesn't it? There's pink and green on there. And I don't know what that means. So a key helps us break it down and see exactly what it is. Okay, good. Now here we get into exactly what Angel was sharing. Angel, will you share a little bit more on the line graph? You said a line graph is? A line graph is a graph that you can use whole numbers and, whole numbers and half numbers like decimals. It might, it might be in between like a half of 15. Okay. Like when you measure temperature, it's not the whole number. You got it. So it's not a whole number. It could be like a fraction. So or you a... deal with proceed with that when you use line graph. That's what I'm talking about. Good. So when you're dealing with a line graph, you connect points and show something over time. Good. Something over time. And time is continuous. Okay. So let's look at this. Ooh, there it comes in. Here's something that we can look at. What's the title of this graph, Jared? Oh, temperatures in New York City. In New York City, good. So we can see here that, well, talk to me, talk to me here. How do I read this? Let's use some active words. This is our monograph. But let's use some active words to talk about this. Who can use two active word wall words? To come up here and put them up there for me. Mm. Megan, come on up. What do you think? Where can we put these? This is the horizontal axis. Okay, this is the horizontal axis. This is the vertical axis. Oh, and this is a vertical axis. Well, how do you know? Because uh, this line uh -huh. is Oh, oh, you just knew that this was horizontal and this is vertical. What's another word that we call for that? The, the, y. the y is, is vertical and the? S Good job. Thank you, Megan. Now, each axis of its own, oh, I didn't think that was a mistake. Each axis has a name. So down here we have the day. And over here we have the degrees. degrees. Good. So on day one, what was the degrees? Keon? 40, 
Good. And you can see each day they give their own temperature, right? We all see that? What, can you make a statement about this? Can you make a statement about this graph just looking at it? Oram, what do you think? That you start with the, um, you start with the horizontal axis, then you go up. Okay, okay, so you start plotting with X and then you go up to Y. Good, you're talking about coordinate planes, good. Can somebody look at this though, that was great, Oram. Can somebody look at this and make a statement about the temperature in New York City though? I wasn't very clear in my first question, I'm sorry. Antonio, can you make a statement about New York City? It's cold and then what? It, it got cold and then it got a little bit more warm, right? So, but is 67 still warm? Mm, we'd probably be freezing down here. So it gets a little bit more warm. Good. Okay. Your turn. Okay. Your turn. Ben and Eliza made graphs to show the number of soccer fields in four different counties. Who made the more appropriate graph? Who made the more appropriate graph? They're showing soccer fields in four counties. Accountable talk. Remember our poster? Use kind words, level one voices, and we respect each other. Ready? Go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, three, two, one. Ba da ba ba ba. Ooh. Okay. Which group wants to share? Which group wants to share? Which one made it first? Donald, what were you thinking? We said that it was the bar graph because oh. the bar graph shows discrete data where only whole numbers are possible. And if you have a soccer field, it's not a complete soccer field if it's only half of it. And continuous data is with line graphs where it only shows decimals and half numbers where, where val all values are possible. Oh, Donald, that was so good, man. That was awesome. I have, an, I have a follow-up question for you. Can you have a line graph where whole numbers are only on there? Yes. You can? Okay, and what does a line graph do? It measures something what? Over time. Over time. Were the soccer fields over time? No, not really. And I loved how Donald said, the bar graph, well, you, you, you can't have half a soccer field and count it as one, can you? You can't go out to a soccer field and say, well, there's just a goal. It's a soccer field. We're done. Can you do that? No. no you got to have a whole soccer field. Good job, Donald. Let's do our good job chant for table two. Ready? Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. G-O-O-D-J-O-B. Good job. Good job. They do a, a good job chant for everybody. Just It feels good. It feels good to say, you know, good job. You did it. And they're fifth graders, which it might be a little too young, but you wouldn't believe it. They get so into it. Good job, good job. You know, and they're clapping along. And is you're going to get a chance to solve your own problem as a group. Okay? I knew it was going to do that. Okay. You're going to have a chance to solve at your table. Now, each group has a different problem. Okay? Some may deal with line graphs, bar graphs, or a double bar graph, okay? Now, let's go through it real fast. Your group will get your own problem. You're going to work as a group, having accountable talk. You're going to get to write on your own poster board, okay? Now, remember how we work as a group. We don't pull pencils and say mean things. We work in a good format when we explore. Also, after this, after the timer, when we get 15 minutes to explore, we're all going to come up and share our findings. Okay? Now, each of you is going to be scored on a rubric. <gasps> okay? Here's your rubric so you at least know where your scores are coming from, okay? And yes. let's go over our champs' expectations with it this time. Your conversation level will be at a one. You can have a quiet conversation with a neighbor. Help, you may work with a neighbor, okay? 
but we will also be walking around to help you if you need help. You are working in small groups, nobody is getting up to move. Are there any questions before we begin? Kian. Oh, we weren't working with a frequency table today. Good question, though. Good question. Are there any other questions before we begin? No? You sure? Okay, now. You're going to start with pencils. Miss Harvey and I see that you guys are on the right track. We'll go ahead and give you a marker so you can start working with that, okay? We don't want to start with markers because sometimes we get a little messed up. You know, we all make mistakes. Okay, I told you you're going to have 15 minutes during this explore time. Are we sure we have no questions? Yes. No? On your mark, get set. Green beans are, oh, you didn't fall for it. Okay, on your mark, get set, go. Hey guys, how are we doing? Thank you. So maybe five minutes. Zero. 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 Okay, so where are we at, guys? Where are we at? What are we thinking? Uh, put the minutes over here and the miles over here. Okay, so how far he ran? Is that what we're looking at? Mm -hmm. Okay, and what kind of graph are you going to use? A line graph. Oh, why a line graph? Because it's measuring over time. Oh, it's measuring over time. How old the data would that be? Continuous. Continuous. Oh, okay. So let me see how you're going to do this. Where do you start with this? Zero. Okay, so you're going to start there. Oh, but then what are you going to do next? Go by fives. Oh, okay, so you're going to go by fives. That's kind of smart. So but we got to label an axis, don't we, though? So which axis are you going to label with what? This is going to be the minutes. Okay, so let's get to it. We only got uh, two. ten minutes left. Let's see. Okay. What are we looking at, team? Well, so we found our title. We put in the miles John wrote per day. Oh, okay. And we're, we're dealing with a line graph, so. Cooperative learning is crucial. I think that they feed off each other. If you've set up a a correct cooperative group where they're they're having accountable talk, they're they're feeding off each other. Okay, you thought this. Uh, we saw a great example of it today with the continuous and discrete data with table two where they said, I think it's discrete. No, I think it's continuous. Okay, why? And I'm more of a facilitator instead of leading a discussion. Okay, why do you think that? Why do you think that? And then they start building and they start thinking and, and it's crucial that you lead them in the right direction because if you just say, okay, it's time to go do math block and they're just wandering or they're not on topic, you can come up with some pretty interesting answers to some questions. But as long as you're funneling the discussion and you have, you know, routines and rituals in place for it, it is an amazing learning opportunity for the kids and, and for myself. They learn things that I didn't even think that were going to be brought out. And I think cooperative groups are awesome. And what can we label over here? Like the, the miles. Okay, so miles. Now, are, what are you going to start with as your value? Zero. Okay, so you're going to go zero, and then you're going to go up how high? You're going to start with zero here. And can I borrow your pencil? Thank you. So you're going to start with zero here. And then how high are you going to go? 27. 20, okay, why 27? Why did you choose 27? We could do 30. You could do 30. Now, why wouldn't we stop at like 15? Because we have bigger numbers. Oh, okay. So the highest number is what's the highest number we should? What do you want, guys? Thirty. Want? You want to say thirty? Okay. So we could do thirty up here. Okay. Now, what do we need to do? Okay. So we need to put the numbers on the which axis is this? The y axis, and we need to label this. What should we la label this axis? Mm, how many miles? Miles. miles. Good. Miles he rode. Good. All right. You guys are on the right track. Somebody can get on doing this over here. Somebody can label this down here, and we can start getting together on it. Good job, guys. So what are you guys doing, Elijah? What you doing? So we we decided to make a line graph. Oh, why a line graph? Because it's on um, the street data, and it's measuring over time. Oh, it's discrete? Oh, we gave you a hint? Make sure to... I didn't do the table, 
and labeled, labeled the axis. Oh. And told us the axis, so we knew it was the line. Oh, you thought it was the line graph? What's another clue that it told you that it was going to be a line graph? It said to like use the high temperatures. Okay, so you're looking at just the high temperatures? And first, we thought you used both temperatures. Oh. So it's going to be two. Oh, you thought it would be like a double. Like a double line graph, which those this, do this exist. They do exist. But then what What clue gave you that? Mm, we read the problem. Oh, you pulled out the key information. Good. So then you saw that you're only using what? The height. Oh, so we're only using these right here. Good. Now, I, I want to go back to something that um, the lady was talking about. Why? Is this continuous or is this discrete data? The continuous. I mean, I think no, it's discrete. What do you think? Discrete. Discrete? Okay, what do you think? And what do you think? Discrete. You think discrete? Why do you think discrete? Because I, if you have a temperature, well, I've never seen like where it says 95 degrees point five or like 90.2 or something like that. So I was thinking that it only could be a de one degree, like a degrees by itself, it can't be uh, another value plus 95 degrees. So I was thinking that it was discrete data. Okay, so you think it might be discrete? Hmm. Does anybody remember what discrete data is usually associated with? What is it usually with? <laughs> what is what is discrete data usually with? Um. It, can, um, it measures what? It measures. Donald, help her out. What does discrete data usually measure? Measures. Decimals. Does discrete data measure decimals? No. It measures only whole numbers. Okay, so discrete is only whole numbers. But what's the key thing about continuous? Data, like time, it that has it. all values are possible. Okay, so all values are possible. But what is so big about continuous data? It goes on and on. It goes over what? Time. Oh, it goes over time. Hmm. This is continuous data. <laughs> Why is it continuous? Because it's continuing from Sunday to Saturday. It's going over time and they're collecting the high temperatures. Oh, so it's going over a period of time. It's continuous. <laughs> So you know that it's continuous data. Good job, guys. I'm going to leave you so you can keep working. Okay? Good job. Wow. Oh, man. No, no, this is dry. Okay, so what are we looking like, guys? What do we see here? What are you doing? Michelle, running silly. You can see running here. Okay, so talk to me. What are we looking like here? Okay, well, so see, we started at zero because that's, because it says, that means that the cheetah is running zero miles at zero minutes. Okay. So these are our minutes and these are our miles. Okay. And then he went up. To okay. So at the first minute, where was he at? At the first minute, he was at 15 miles per hour. Okay. And at the second minute, where was he? He was at 30 miles. Ooh, so oh, at the second minute. Oh, okay, okay. That's okay. No worries at all. That's why we use pencil. It's so much easier. Okay, good. I like how neat you guys are working on your graph here. Okay. And then, Jared, what do you think after three minutes? Where is he at? Okay. Yes. He's at um, 30 miles per hour. How did you know that? It didn't say that in there, though. How did you know that? And, and it, um, because it said an additional five. Um, Oh, he runs at that what? At that rate, at that pace. Good. So we know at 1 he's at 15, at 2 he's at 30, at 3 he's at 45, at 4 he's at 60. 60. Good. And then 75. And then at 5 he gets to 75. Okay, and then what happens after that? He runs at that rate for 5 minutes. Oh, so then he stays at... 75? Wow, okay. What are we going to do with Okay, so that Six, means... Seven, eight, nine. So that means okay. since he's at five, that means plus the five minutes. He'd be... For the, he'd be running for 75 minutes until they get to the 10. Oh, he'd be running at 75 what? Miles per hour. Oh. 
Interesting. So you probably go like this. Oh, so, oh, okay. Very interesting. Now, are you guys done with your thing? Uh -uh. Oh, what do you got to do next? Write a story that Oh, write a story that highlights each point. Y'all are going to get some bonus minutes. Don't worry, okay? Go ahead. Good work, guys. Keep going. Keep going. I think, like I said before, cooperative groups are awesome, but they need a little molding sometimes, and, and that's where I come in. I just come in, and I assess where they're at. I sit down. If they're in the middle of conversation, like I came and sat down at the table before, and they're in the middle of having a heated discussion, I think they should go there. I think they should. I'm not going to interrupt them. Let them finish their conversation, and then I say, okay, so where are we at? That's usually where I sit down. I say, hey, so what are we thinking? Where, where are we at here? And they should be able to tell me, hey, we're doing this, we're doing that, but we don't know what scale to go up by, and, and what do you, you know, sometimes they bounce ideas, and just having a teacher presence there is good, because then they're going, okay, well, should I, I, it's a safe place, should I bounce it off here, maybe this group member will take that. And, and I, I just rotate around to each group, touch base with them for a couple minutes, make sure they're on, go to the next group, and then I just keep rotating around. If I see a group is really struggling, this group is struggling a little bit, I made sure that I came back and checked on them, just even if I did a walk by. Walk by, okay, they're on the right step, then I'll go back to where I was. Let's do it first in pencil, let's do it first in pencil, okay? Thank you. Let's keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. for me guys our timer was up but you know what I think we need a little bit more of an explore time what do you guys think yes. yes I was walking around I really liked how you guys were working as a group how you're labeling your axis how you're paying attention to the key points and you're pulling out all that extra information and tossing it away and, and really highlighting on the key things so what I'm gonna do guys I'm gonna give you an extra 10 minute bonus section okay after 10 minutes we've got to be done are we clear? Okay, I see you're already writing to get back to work. Go. Okay, so talk to me about your graph. Okay, this talk, And using just this, talk to me. Well, we saw that when we read the question, it talked, it said, uh, use the high temperatures. Mm -hmm. So, and it said that it was in Bucky, so we labeled it high temperatures in Bucky. So then, we read where it said, make sure to label the axis so we did horizontal x axis and vertical y axis okay. and then we labeled over here the days okay. and over there temperatures one of the days and then we did like we labeled it from tens by tens to a hundred oh and why did you buy ten why did you count by ones so i think it was going to take a long time and we weren't going to make it tonight it it was going to take a long time, wasn't it? Now, what's so, another way you could have labeled it? 20s. Okay, by 20s. What else could you have done? Uh, what do you think? You guys did by high temp, by the high temp, I mean, yeah, yeah, from the temperatures and high, from okay. low to high. And you did a great job of, of doing it by the 10s. You could have done it by the 20s. What if we wanted to zoom in just on this right here? We just wanted to zoom 30s. in on that. What could we have counted by? 30s. Okay, now if we did 30s, remember these are very close together, so it'd just be tiny little dots. What if we wanted to start at a different scale? What if we started instead of zero? What what if we started at 80? 80. Negative? Not negative. No, because remember this is all gonna be positive over here. What then, if we started at 80 and we just went to hundred? We did 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, or 90, 91. What could, could you do that? You could do that too? Yes. Would it, would it still give you the same thing? Yes. Oh, but what would it look like? It would be all over the ground. Yes, it would be all over. But guys, let me tell you something. I am so proud of this group, okay? You guys really rocked it. I am really proud of you guys. This looks excellent. And you even got the town in there? All right, ba da ba ba ba. Oh, that was stinky, stinky. Ba da ba ba ba. I love it. Thank you. And your seat. Three, two, 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 
one. Okay. All right, guys. What we're going to do is I want you guys to come up here and present. Who should we start with? Who should we start with? Do we have any volunteers? Who wants to go first? Who wants to go first? Okay. One, two, and four. <laughs> Let's go with one. Okay. Let's put it up here. Let's see what we got here. Okay. What are we looking? Ooh. What are we looking at, table one? Okay. Let's see here. This is their problem. It says John rode his bike each day for a week, Sunday through Saturday. He recorded his data in a notebook. It says, create a line graph and label the key components. Using the data, make one statement comparing the data and one statement contrasting the data. Okay, so talk to us, table one. What did you do? Angel, can you go up there and present for us? What we did, we had... Yes, I think it is very important for the kids to be able to explain their work. If, if you can do your work, awesome. But you have to be able to explain the steps, explain um, how to do everything. Because in math, if you can teach somebody else, or in any subject, you can teach it. You know it. If you can just hand a piece of paper in that has answers on it, okay, well, did, do you really get it? Or did you just bubble answers? Did you just make a line graph? Did, did you really get it? But when they present, they're explaining it. And, and I'm not even asking the questions. You saw that the students ask questions. Well, why didn't you do this? And they have to be on their toes, able to answer it. If I see that the group is all able to answer and able to explain, then I, I think they really did get it. You know, and I'll, I'll have more formative assessments as, as an exit ticket. But um, I think that having students explain with their words and numbers is crucial. On Mondays, he rode 17 miles. Oh, okay. And then, okay, so I see. So Sunday... He rode 22, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then Monday he rode 17. Okay, and on Tuesday, what did he ride? 19. 19, so we're back up here. And then Wednesday? 19. Oh, you stayed the same? Okay, 19. Thursday? He rode 27. Oh, close. Thursday. Oh, 20, 21. 21. Good, and then Friday he went up to... 25, good, and Saturday? 27. Awesome, you did a great job. And the reason why we didn't put no key, because we weren't comparing nothing. And doing line graph, you comparing over time. Good job. You're not comparing over time, but you measure something over time. Good job, Angel, that is awesome. Now, I see on there that you guys, I know you worked a long time probably on that line graph, didn't you? that we didn't get a chance to say one statement that compares and contrasts the data. Is there anybody in your group that could give me one that compares data on there? That maybe compares some data? Anybody from table one able to help her? Something that compares it? Maybe John rode more days. Oh. Maybe something like that? John, he rode on, on these, these two days. He wrote the same amount. Oh, okay, so he wrote the same. And can you give me one that maybe is contrasting, maybe a little different? Well, one he wrote from a Friday and from Friday and uh Thursday. Friday and Thursday, he was in the twenties. He was just two away from Friday, he just added two more, uh, oh. he wrote two more extra. Okay, very cool. Do you guys see that, how the data went up two more the next day? Very cool. Does anybody have any thoughts, any positive comments for table one? Anybody? Yes, Deja? She says, I like the chart and, and you did a very good job. Good. Donald? After our groups present, um, I ask the class, is there a positive praise that you would like to give? So that's a chance for the students to provide something nice to another student. You wouldn't believe that our students don't know how to talk to each other. They don't know how to say, I like the way that you did that. I like your shoes today. They just kind of sometimes just know negative things to say. Oh, you, this, this, this. 
So when I first came in here with them, I said, you know what, we're going to say positive things, okay? I think that it's crucial that you see they get up there and they're pretty comfortable. They'll just talk. They'll, they'll just explain that that was, a, that was a learning experience for them. And to hear their classmates say, hey, good job, I liked your graph, that means the world to them. And after we have a positive praise moment, I'll say, any comments or questions? And then that gives the students a chance to say, hey, I liked how you did this, but what if you, you counted by twos instead of ones? Maybe that would have made it easier for you. Good job. G-double-O-D-J-O-B. Good job, good job. Awesome. Let, using the following data table, create an appropriate graph. Make sure to label the key components with the graph you create. Okay, their graph is about corn. Mmm, yummy corn, okay? Now it also says, is the graph continuous or discrete? And analyze the components and share two statements. Holy guacamole. Okay, let's look here, Keon. Talk to us, man. On the first, oh, yeah, first we made our uh, line graph. Um, I know we had, um, we had, we, I know we had these, um, these fractions, like these fractions, like numbers, and with, like with decimals, we decimals. So we, so we um, made it, so we made it to whole numbers and just pair up the line graph on the y-axis. Then, then we had the months, so we put them across on the x-axis. And so then, and so then we put then we put them in between, because uh, we know we had the numbers, we had, so we had to um, make like what we think the decimals were. So we put them, so we put them what we thought, I mean, what we thought it was closest to. Okay, so April, just just so we're all on the same page. So April, what did you kind of round it to? On um, like really close to three. Okay, because the number was three and two, two. Yeah, three and two. What? Um, That's uh, right. Two. So okay, so let's just round it to three. Okay. And then in May it was six and seven, and so what did you do? Um, in May, yeah, it was yeah, it was six point seven. So I tried to make it like a little bit between the number. Okay, so a little above six, good. I like that. And you know what I also love about your graph is you did you even labeled x axis and the y axis, and you have titles for both axes. Awesome. Now I see there's multiple questions on here, so I want to get to it. Um, continuous or discrete? But it was continuous. Because Why? Oh yeah, because it's measuring over time because each month is grow it's each month is a different it's a different month and that's time and it's growing and the corn is growing. Oh, okay. So it says the graph that we created is continuous because it's measuring over time. Awesome. And now number two it says on every month can you read that to me? On on it says where? For number two on your oh. chart, the, it says the two statements. Um, oh yeah, um, every month the corn grew about um, times two its heights every month, and they are different because each month is a different height. That is such a cool observation. You know what? I didn't even, I didn't even see that observation. Do you guys see what he's saying? It and some months. Now, does it double in every month? Not, not every month. Not every month, but. From April to May, it kind of doubles. From May to June, it kind of doubles. Um, April. From the different months, they kind of double. Good. Awesome. Thank you, sweetie. Now, anybody have any positive points for them? Angel? It was, I like how it was neat and uh, he, how he answered his questions. They was in a complete sentence and he used the uh he used the chart as um in his sentences. Good. And that he had uh titled it like put height and month and he had a good title. Good, I like that. He kind of kept his work neat, didn't he? And he used that too. Okay. Anybody got a comment for him? Maybe, hey, I like this. And it was just, hey, you were in the group. Do you have a comment for your own group? Okay, what do you say? <laughs> I like we did it by whole numbers because if we would have did it by the decimals, we would have had, had to split them all up. So I said that we could put it into a whole number. Oh, so that was good thinking, huh? That was good thinking. Awesome. And a comment from a different team? I was going to say they could have counted by twos. Oh, by twos. And why do you say twos? Because if they had counted by twos, it probably be a lot easier. You think? Now threes are, are larger than twos. So you would have, would you have more numbers on that graph or would you have less? 
Oh, you would have more. That's another option, though, that they could have done. Good thought. Awesome, guys. Now, I have one last thing we're going to do before we take our exit ticket for today. Okay? The last thing we're going to do today is I'm going to talk about our essential question. I'm going to bring it back to that. And our standard. Okay? The essential question I want to talk about, because that's something we should be able to answer after every class. The essential question I want to know is, we've talked about what's the best type of graph and that's what your exit ticket's going to be on, okay? But I want to talk this out right now. What is the difference, it says, between continuous and discrete data, and how are they represented in graphs? And this is the essential question I want to answer today, okay? Somebody help me with this. What is the difference between continuous and discrete data, and how... Are they represented in graphs? This is somebody who I haven't called on much today. Marcus, I haven't heard from you much, buddy. What do you want to share on? The street that uh, only has whole numbers. Okay, so you found that discrete. Ooh, my marker's right now. Data has whole numbers. Okay, and that was Marcus. Anybody have something else they'd like to share? Okay, Marker is running out. Andre, I haven't heard from you today much, buddy. What you thinking? Continuous measure over time. Oh, okay, so we found that continuous data it measures over time. Good, Andre. And that was Andre. What else are we thinking? Antonio? Continuous um, data is, it can be measured, uh, I mean, when it's measured over time, it can be measured with months, days, and years, and time. Okay, so with time, I'm going to add on there that you say days, months, Years. That's a good addition, yeah. Good, Antonio. Megan, what you think? Oh, we can have decimals. Okay. Whenever we do charts, I tell them that they're going to be famous. So they always, we start at the beginning, he wants to be famous, and they get to call, you know, say an answer and I put their name next to it. So whenever somebody does something for most of the charts in the room, like a division charts or, or anything, if they solve it, whether they're writing it or I am, their name goes next to it. So they can always look back and say, oh, remember when we did this? You know, and they love coming up to the board. If you just give them a marker and you just tell them to go solve an expression or something, you know, they're all about it. So that's something I try and do. I, I let them be famous. Fractions. And that's Daviana. Okay. Who else I don't want to hurt today? Alaysia, what you think? The continuous data has um all, has all values. Okay, all values. So it can have fractions, decimals, all sorts of things. Perfect. Our poor discrete data is feeling lonely. What do you think? Discrete data is like is like when you compare. Good job. When you're comparing things. Comparing things. Good. And that's Tiffany. Can somebody give me an example of each? Can you give me an example of each? Oram, what's an example of discrete data? Um, like discrete data, it goes down instead of it up. Oh, you think discrete data only goes down, or does it go up too? What do it you think? It goes up and down. Oh, okay. Give me an example of discrete data. Give me an example of something. What? Like, say you got two bus, and then you can go up with three. Oh, okay. So you're thinking numbers. You could start with two and go up to three. 
Good. That is that is discrete data. It's going to give an example of a graph, maybe, that we could use with discrete data. Jimmy, what kind of graph could we use with discrete data? A line graph. Oh, would a line graph go with discrete? A frequency table. Oh, a frequency table. That could be it. Good. Let's think about what we use today, though. A double bar graph. A double bar graph. Good. Okay, so. Oh, that kind of looks like a regular one. Good. So a double bar graph. Okay, what else? One more. We have a double bar graph and we have one other thing. Uh, Tiffany? A regular bar. A regular bar graph. Good. Okay, and Jimmy, what do we use for continuous, for a graph? A line graph. <laughs> a line graph. Good job. Okay, guys. Did we answer our essential question that was, what is the difference between continuous and discrete data and how they're represented in graphs? Do we think we answered it? Yes. Yes. Do we feel good about it? Yes. Awesome. What we're going to do, guys, now is we're going to take our exit ticket. It's only three questions, and it's going to answer our other essential question. What has to do with how do you choose the best type of graph? Okay? That's what your essential question, or your exit ticket is. No. An exit ticket is an assessment whether they understood the standard I taught or not. Yeah, I had three questions on it. Two were multiple choice. One was an explain. Um, right to explain. So two of them, they just had to read the situation, choose the correct graph. The third one, why did you choose the correct graph? Is this, you know, what gave you clues for it? And when I grade those, I'll get a clear picture. And they did it independently. They have two minutes per problem. We're trying to get time management down. So they have six minutes to do it. They, when they finish, they go put it in the pocket as in their number and they turn their test and pick up their homework and usually we leave but we have a little extra time today so we, we use exit ticket data I grade them we actually we're all about data in here so you'll see we have a data board behind me with um, all the big assessments that we do but every day we also keep exit ticket averages per class if they're below 70 percent we need to look well, actually what I do is I break it down I put them in a, a spreadsheet and I say okay these kids got it they're completely proficient these kids need a little extra help, and these kids did not get it at all. Now, your kids that don't get it at all, you need to pull a small group with. You sit down and say, okay, this is the strategy. Where did we not get it? Your kids that need a little extra help, maybe they missed one or two problems, sit with them during group work. See if they get it the next day. And your kids that really got it, you need to give them some enrichment. They're already there. They're going to get bored if you keep teaching the same thing, whole group. Give them something to push them farther into further understanding of the topic. So, that's how we use exit tickets. It's a real quick assessment that you can do every day. It's not a 25 question test that the kids get bored with and, and you get tired of grading. It's just very quick. Grade it, they're back to them the next day.